Hello, and welcome back to the Circle of Divine Light Magical Lecture Series. I am Bernard Alvarez, and I would just like to welcome all of our students back for this second uh, module, I guess you could call it, of the uh, Magical Lecture Series. Today, we are going to be discussing the Tarot, as well as aligning our I guess our mentality, our consciousness with the cycles of the universe and of the seasons. And what I'd like to do, first of all, is, uh, of course, you know, let's take a breath. Let's ground ourselves. Um, if you are taking notes, um, please uh, don't take notes right now. You can always rewatch the video, but just kind of experience the video before you start um, taking notes. You can always rewind. Um, for those of you that are... Um, for those of you that have been following the course, uh, I, I hope you are enjoying it. And for those of you that are watching this for the first time, uh, this particular class is not, it's not necessary to watch the earlier videos. However, uh, with the tarot subject, I think it would be in your best interest to go back and review the, um, the elemental um, aspects, uh, the classic elements uh, in the earlier classes. So, first of all, let's talk a little bit about um, aligning ourselves with the universal energies and the seasons and whatnot, and what that means. Um, what I, I, and I'm just going to do a quick overview of this, but I feel that um, it's something that uh, is very helpful to all of us. I think that, um, I feel that the, uh, the, the knowledge of knowing uh, the cycles of the moon, uh, knowing the cycles of the sun, and of course, now that we are moving toward 2012, uh, the whole aspect of the, uh, the galactic uh, rotation around the center of the universe is something to be uh, aware of these days as well as we head toward galactic center uh, to understand the alignments and to understand our, um, our, our, I guess, our 3D time is a good way of thinking of it. Uh, is very helpful uh, to aligning yourself with the vibration of the universe. So I'm just really going to do an overview. Forgive me for one second. Let me get a drink of water here. The, um, I think that the best place, or I feel the best place to start would be with the moon cycles and understanding the moon energy and whatnot. Uh, for those of you that are, are uh, I guess, practicing pagans or natural magic type people, uh, you're pretty much already aware of the moon cycles and understand the energy of the moon. Um, of course, we know that our body is made of primarily water, and the moon does affect the tides in the ocean, so you can imagine how it would affect the tides, uh, or at least pull on the... Um, have a gravitational pull on the water within all of us, within our blood and whatnot. And so, as we know, the, the moon is on a 28-day cycle, and um, it has, uh, of course, uh, two halves. It has a waxing period, which means that it's getting bigger and brighter, and it has a waning period when it gets smaller and smaller. Uh, normally, when someone wants to uh, promote the growth of something, uh, they will align themselves with the energy of the waxing moon. Uh, a great time to start a project for me is uh, possibly the second or third day after the new moon when you start seeing the little crescent in the sky. You can put your intention out there and watch as the moon grows the energy of that particular thought form or prayer or whatnot that you are putting out there will begin to grow in size as well as reducing uh, you would use the uh, waning moon. Uh, I, th I feel it's really good to acknowledge the full moon and the new moon, if anything, for um, internal or spiritual time um, awareness or making a, a, a comparison in time for you as a, as a spiritual person. It gives you the ability to, uh, to kind of like connect with the way the universe is going on a monthly, uh, on a monthly cycle. Uh, of course, there is also the, uh, the entire year cycle and the seasonal cycle. And um, many of the cultures, including most pagan cultures and uh, native indigenous cultures, acknowledge the solstices, whether it be the winter solstice, the summer solstice, uh, and uh, split the year in half in that regard. 
uh, having the uh, the equinoxes becoming the cross quarter, um, splitting that into four into four segments, which is your four seasons. So as we as we begin to acknowledge these, even if we take a, a, a small moment, the day of an equinox or solstice, to set aside some time to meditate on it and connect with the energy of that, I guess that changing of the cycle, if, if that's what you want to call it, is uh, very helpful uh, again in aligning ourselves and also creating a greater universal um, consciousness for us to live on a daily uh, in a daily way. And as we live uh, in this way, where we are connected to the cycles of the seasons and of the moon, you'll find your affinity and your connection with uh, nature around you. And of course, your, if you want to call it your psychic um, ability or your intuition, begins to grow as you become more sensitive to these changes. So that is basically all I'm going to talk about on that. If you would like to get more information, uh, you can go online anywhere and look up the Wheel of the Year. If you're into the, the pagan aspect, you can also look into the indigenous uh, celebrations uh, for any culture around the world and how they celebrate uh, uh, these cycles of nature and the cycles of the sun and the moon and whatnot. Um, so by all means, you know, I just, again, I wanted to uh, introduce this idea and this concept to you today before I moved on to the Tarot. And, of course, let's just go ahead and move on to the Tarot right now. Um, the Tarot, uh, well, as far as history is concerned, I just have to say that um, there's been a lot of controversy uh, where it came from, who created it, what kind of a system is it, what does it mean. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, if for me, I'm very comfortable with the idea that comes out of Egypt and, and has been a uh, uh, the, the symbology in it and the symbols in it basically stem from the old uh, Egyptian uh, magical system. If you have, uh, if you're interested in doing the Tarot, if you're interested in doing readings for yourself or for somebody else, you want to go find a, uh, a deck, or if you already have a deck, um, make sure that it speaks to you. I remember when I first started, uh, I used the Rider Weight deck and it just didn't do it for me. Uh, uh, for me, it was very simplistic. It was very hard for me to read the symbolism. There wasn't enough going on. And uh, someone had given me, and uh, this is another thing, it's great if you get it as a gift. Uh, someone had bought me, actually my mom bought me for my 18th birthday or something, uh, the Crowley deck, the, the Toth deck or Thoth deck, or whatever you wish to call it. And uh, I preferred um, using that deck because of the fact that it is very uh, vivid. It really speaks to me. There's a lot of symbolism in it. And uh, a lot of people don't like it because of the man who created it or whatnot. And for me, it's not about the, the person who created the technology. It's about the technology and how you use it. So if you're okay with that aspect of it and you are comfortable with it, by all means, I would go ahead and um, use that particular deck. Actually, I'll show you a sample of some of the symbology here. Let me find a, a really wow picture here. Actually, they're all pretty wow. Uh, here we go. There's a great one. The Sun card, which is my favorite and one of my favorites. Let's see. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it here. There you go. I don't know if you can see, but it's just so vivid. The colors are very bright. You have a lot of symbology, symbolism going on in there. It might be a little blurry uh, with this particular camera, but um, you can see the, the flower in the center as the sun, and you'll see around the edges are all the astrological um, symbols and whatnot. But anyway, they, they begin to speak to you. So let's talk about that. How do we do a, a tarot reading for ourselves or a tarot reading for somebody else? Uh, how, do we, how do I become a tarot reader is kind of how I'm going to pursue this, and I'm going to share it with you the way it was taught to me. The first thing you want to do, of course, is get your deck. And as far as the treatment of the deck, and I'm going to just take it for granted that uh, we're all starting from scratch here. And... Um, or if not, we want to kind of polish up our, our, our technique a little bit and get a little bit of a reminder. So let's start off by uh, acknowledging your deck kind of as a, a consciousness within itself. 
I know that sounds a little crazy, but uh, let's call it a little anthropomorphized. Is that the word? Anthropomorph anthropomorphic. <laughs> It is, you want to kind of give it life. You want to uh, give it energy. You want it to be alive. You want it to be able to speak to you. Um, in regard to that, you would want to treat it with respect. Um, you wouldn't want your deck laying around in your glove compartment and, and your car. You don't want to leave it in the kitchen, uh, the junk drawer. You know, so if you can, keep the, um, the cards in a place, uh, whether it be like maybe on your altar or some, you know, spiritual corner, maybe on, on a bookshelf where you have all your spiritual books, but something that has a, a sense of, uh, of respect to it and give a, a certain sense of respect to your deck, of course. Um, one of the other things that you can do is you can keep it wrapped in a cloth. Um, I personally uh, was given a, uh, a, uh, an altar cloth many, many years ago that I still have. Uh, just a black, you know, uh, scarf type cloth that has little stars and moons on it. Actually, the stars and moons are wearing off. But um, anyway, so I do keep them wrapped up, and uh, I keep them next to my little Buddha statue on my on my little altar on my night table. So that's uh, kind of like my way of giving reverence to them. If um, one of the things I do want to say, though, as far as tarot is concerned, and all divination for that matter. And, the, and this is probably the reason why I chose Tarot as my main form of divination, is that it's not fortune telling. If you are looking to become a fortune teller and absolutes and, 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 and prophecy person or whatnot, uh, this technique, the way that I'm going to show, is not for you. Uh, I look at uh, the Tarot more as a, um, how shall we say, a, a psychological aid or a parapsychological aid would probably be a better way of saying it. For some reason, uh, the Tarot incorporates so many symbols of the universal subconscious, according to Jung, that when I read the cards, I'm kind of just pulling out, if I'm doing a reading for you. I'm from the school of thought that we create our own destinies, that we create our own lives, and uh, we already know what's going to happen within our subconscious, but a lot of times we get so caught up and uh, on our day-to-day, moment-to-moment, and distractions, and crises, and whatnot, and in the media, and et cetera, et cetera, that we can use and utilize the Tarot as a way to kind of bring that subconscious uh, up to the, to the forefront for us to be able to have a clearer perspective and a greater awareness of, of situations, no matter what they are. Um, so I just want to put that out there. I, I don't see this as something so extremely magical and, and whatnot that, uh, you know, it's an absolute. Uh, every time that I do a spread, um, I always, and especially if I'm doing it uh, for someone else, a client or somebody, uh, I will always uh, precurse the reading with, I just want you to understand that everybody has an energy and a flow that, uh, uh, you know, cause and effect of how things are going. And what this spread is going to share with you is uh, the possible outcome. If things keep going the way they are, this will be the outcome. In other words, you know, you're putting two in today, two in tomorrow. Well, on the third day, you're going to have four. It, it's kind of just a common sense approach to a very, you know, um, no BS type thing. Uh, I'm not into the whole Miss Cleo mentality of it. But I do feel it's a very, very helpful tool. And I think that it's very important that when you read uh, for other people that they understand that they have the ability to change their destiny as well. Uh, I don't believe that anything is written in stone as far as the Tarot is concerned. It's just a, a very a clearer outlook of the way things are going. If, the way, if they keep going the way they're going, this is what you're going to end up with. And I feel that's what the Tarot tells you when you're doing a full spread. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit um, about the, uh, the daily card today. I'm going to cover the daily card today. I'm going to cover the, uh, the Celtic cross spread, which you can see above my head over here. And we're going to cover the, um, just the, uh, the yes or no, how to do a yes or no. And uh, you'll find that uh, you'll probably use the yes or no the most. I know I do. It's a great way to help you make decisions and gives you some of the, um, you know, what could happen if uh, aspects. So it gives you a, a, real, a very clear um, idea, uh, especially if you like to live uh, very consciously of your actions. 
you know, what will be the results if you do this is a, is a great uh, utilization of the tarot. Anyway, <coughs> pardon me, back to the, the care of the tarot. Um, when you first get your deck, or if it's been a while since you've held them and loved them and talked to them and used them and shuffled them, uh, you're, you're going to probably want to uh, create a connection, an energetic connection with them. Uh, one of the things I always um, I feel for myself is I don't let other people uh, read my cards. Uh, I usually have a guest deck because I usually have a lot of friends that are also readers and whatnot and they want to do a spread. I have a deck that they can use, but my deck is my deck. I don't let anybody else use them. Um, and in order to create that connection, what I highly recommend is that for the first, for a full moon cycle, uh, you sleep with them under your pillow and uh, let them connect with your subconscious and your, and your energy when you're, when you're in a sleeping state so you can kind of, you know, connect and vibrate with them and they can vibrate with you. It creates a good psychic link uh, with uh, the deck of cards. And so that's one, that's one aspect of getting, um, getting a connection going with them. And if I think of anything else in the meantime, I will go ahead and share it with you. But um, anyway, the, uh, as far as doing a spread for yourself or, or somebody else, let me just state that when it comes to doing a full spread, um, and we'll go into, into depth about that a little bit more, I really... I personally, for me, I was not comfortable giving myself a full reading uh, for a while. And the reason being is that in the beginning, a lot of beginners, uh, and especially those of us who are just starting off on the uh, cosmic, spiritual, light worker, pagan path or whatever, uh, we still have a lot of uh, issues in dealing with our ego. And a lot of times that little ego will sneak up and won't let you read the cards clearly. Uh, I know that many times back when I first started, maybe in my early 20s or whatnot, I'd do a reading for myself and I didn't like the answer. So I would just keep on, you know, keep pulling cards until I got the answer that I wanted, you know. So it, it, you just got, it's up to you. You've got to gauge yourself. Can you be honest with yourself? How, how willing are you to be honest with, your, with what the Tarot is trying to tell you? Because it is speaking to you. It's trying to tell you a story about your life and... and and where it's headed and how you're doing and whether it be, you know, business, love, work, you know, spirituality, whatever it may be. But how willing are you to be honest with yourself? So if you feel you're not so honest with yourself, I would highly recommend let somebody else read for you. Uh, also, uh, you, you can do the yes or no's. I mean, you can't deny a yes or a no, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But um, the, uh, the cards come. And, uh, you know, the major arcana and the minor arcana, and then, of course, uh, they are all, they all have the suits, which are mine, uh, use, utilize the cups, the swords, the pentacles, and the staffs. And, uh, of course, you know, the staff would be the wand, the pentacles, oh, oh I'm sorry, yeah, the, That's what I was saying, forgive me. I'm just looking at it. I'm going, I have my cups, I got my pentacles. I don't have pentacles. Anyway, um, yes, I do. Anyway, of course, of course I'm sorry. It's, I can't even tell I haven't picked up my cards in about a month. But anyway, um, uh, they, they come in the four suits, and then the four suits are, of course, linked to the elements and the energy of that particular element. So that's going to kind of guide you into what your perception of that card is. Uh, I always recommend uh, reading the book, reading what each suit means. Uh, when you first start off, you might want to um, keep that little book nearby, and keep practicing until you get to know, and just a, a, a custom, become more accustomed with the meanings of each particular card. But I will tell you this, and I'm going to share something with you right now um, about that is that, you know, for some people, the hermit might be uh, a, a symbolic card, and I don't have it available, I'll show it to you. But the hermit card is a major arcana card, and for some people it means loneliness or, or being alone and whatnot, and for other people it means introspection and, and a time of self, you know, reflection and whatnot. So, you know, it depends on who wrote the book, 
Uh, again, I highly recommend, you know, going through the book, understanding. Sometimes they give you a little booklet that comes with the card and you can, a card, so you can get to know the meanings by that. But I have a technique that I'm going to share with you today that you can use um, to help you uh, create your own um, a symbolism and whatnot. Of course, you know, by all means, you know, I hope by now you've studied a little bit about symbolism. Uh, if you haven't, by, you know, by all means, let's do some research on the Internet. If you don't understand the symbol on, your, on a card, you might want to look up what that symbol means, like the flower of life or a particular astrological symbol. Uh, a lot of the cards I know here in the Crowley deck, it has the, um, the alchemy, I don't know if you want to call it alchemical, but the astrological symbols. Uh, I think, I believe that one's a symbol for Scorpio or Leo, I'm not sure, but uh, I, can't, I can't really see here. I don't have my glasses on, sorry. <laughs> but um, if you don't know what a symbol means, you know, find out what it means, because it will have a certain vibration and a certain energy associated with it, and it's through the symbols that you can read the cards and, and come up with your own, um, I guess, uh, equation uh, of what it means, of what that particular card is meaning in relation to the other card. All right, so with that said, I, I guess that's a good way to start off. Uh, I'm going to share with you a technique that was shown to me on how to practice using the Tarot. Uh, I, th I thought it was brilliant. Uh, of course, when I was first given it, I, I thought the guy was absolutely crazy. But after doing it for, I think I did it for about 30 days, and then I started going back to using regular cards, uh, it made a, it, it changed everything for me. I had been doing Tarot uh, by the book, quote unquote, uh, for about four or five years prior to learning this technique, and after that was really uh, when I became a real reader. And I think, uh, I feel, uh, for me, the reality of it is, is that you, you really aren't a real reader until you let the cards talk to you instead of you telling the card what it means. And what I mean by that is like, oh, well, that, the book says that this means that. No, let the card tell you what it means. So how do we do that? Well, what, you wanna, what you're going to want to do is you wanna get, um, you're going to want to get um, some uh, uh, clear, I mean, I'm sorry, blank text um, index cards. I wish I had one. Uh, I used to, but I'm out of them. Blank index cards, and depending on what kind of uh, deck you're gonna you're gonna get, uh, you might want to get a 56, you might want to get 60. Uh, depending on the deck that you're going to be using, you want to line the number of uh, index cards with that deck that you're using, and that those index cards are going to be completely blank, and they are going to be your tarot cards for the first uh, month or whatnot, however long you choose. But this is a really great technique for you to. Um, to practice uh, letting the card speak to you. Um, before I get into that, though, let me offer this as well. I will say that before I started doing that, before I started doing the um, the blank uh, index card technique, I did do uh, one particular thing in my in my uh, early tarot days. And I highly recommend this, and, and I, I apologize for jumping ahead because I'm just now realizing you can't do the blank index card thing without doing this first uh, step. And that first step is to take one card every day, every single day, take one card off the top, and it's something called scanning and, and contemplating. And what you're going to do, remember our visualization technique that we did uh, several classes back? where I had you kind of visualize the entire thing 3D and close your eyes and whatnot, you're going to do the same thing with each card. You're going to scan using your eyes, just going back and forth, kind of like a TV in the pixels, scanning back and forth until you get a clear imprint, you know, just going all the way down the card, back and forth with your eyes, scanning, 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 getting every inch, every, every image, every symbol, and scanning the entire card and then putting it down, closing your eyes, and going into the image. And what I mean by going into the image, it's kind of like um, the whole, I want to say Alice in Wonderland type thing. But uh, most of the cards have like backgrounds. They'll have like a sky or, or it's a landscape or, or something to that effect. Go into that. 
do a meditation every morning. Let this be a part of your daily meditation when you're doing whether you're, your breathing technique or your energy work and grounding yourself. Take a card, scan the card, and close your eyes and go into the card for just a few minutes and get to know the card. Feel your way around in your mind's eye. Feel your way around the card. Visit every little corner of the card. Go as far back deep into the, the card. Um, if there's like a landscape, I know many of the, the Crowley ones have like hills in the background and whatnot. Just visualize it, going into that little terra land and that one card. And I would recommend doing this daily um, until you go through the entire deck. So that way you get a feeling of each card and you get to know the vibration and the energy of the card and you can kind of like understand, you know, how your emotions are. Uh, I would highly also suggest uh, that you keep a journal. Same thing, like I said before, when you're doing the, um, when you're doing your um, energy work and whatnot and your grounding, how I've asked you in the past to keep a journal of, you know, what day was it, what was, the, you know, the weather, the temp, you know, whatnot, and how you felt. And the same thing is, uh, applies to this. How did you feel when you were in the card? What kind of energy did it, it give you? What did it resonate? Because a lot of the times that will be the card talking to you and that's you creating a uh, dynamic relationship, interpersonal relationship with that particular image. So, I, I, again, every day take one card, scan it. Uh, get to know the card, go into the card, meditate on the card, and then um, maybe also record how you felt. And that's a great way to build up your system because I do believe in creating a personalized uh, method and technique. And, uh, and of course, you know, if, like I said before, if one card means one thing to you and you feel the book says something, I would go with what you're feeling because that's the way the card is talking to you. So this is a great way of developing that whole interpersonal relationship with a symbol and imagery on each particular card. Okay. So now you've done the entire deck. You've meditated on each deck. You've gone, I mean, each uh, card. You've gone into each card and you've scanned each card. You're getting to know each particular image and essence and vibration of each particular uh, symbol and every card. Now, you can start um, doing a, 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 a blank spread or uh, the, the void spread that I call, which is the empty index card. And it's amazing what will happen. But before you do that, you're going to need to know how to do a Celtic spread. And we're going to do that now. I'm going to explain that to you. All right. So when you're doing, when you're doing a reading, whether it be for yourself, or somebody else. And I'm actually going to explain this uh, if it's for somebody else, because a good way to practice is to practice with your friends and whatnot, and you take turns with each other. <clears throat> you would have, um, you get the deck. Now remember, uh, we're not doing the blank thing yet. You get the deck and you'll be, um, you'll hand them the card and you'll ask them to think about whatever it is that they're asking. Uh, so let's say, for example, I have a client that wants me to do a reading um, about a job that they're very unhappy at. And they just want to get an overview. They just like, tell me what's going on. You'll find uh, that 70% of the people that ask you for a reading just want to have an overview of what's going on with their life. So what they would do is they would take the cards, you would hand them the cards, tell them to shuffle, start shuffling, but while they're shuffling, to think about their question. Let's say, uh, give me an overview. I'm not going to do a reading on myself, but I'm just acting out for you. <laughs> give me an overview of my life. Tell me what's going on. And that's what they would be saying as they're shuffling. Once they have shuffled, and I always say this, Whenever you feel that you're done shuffling, put the cards down. You, uh, you can shuffle for five, ten minutes if that's what you feel you need to do. Whenever you feel you're done shuffling, as soon as your body tells you to stop, stop. And what you'll do is you'll cut the cards in three. I'm sorry, I don't have a, a table here to show you, but you would cut them 
into three stacks. One stack, two stack, three stacks. Okay? And you would ask them to put their hand on one of the decks. And that deck is going to be the top deck. Put it all back in. I used to try to tap them, put in some of my energy and create a uh, connection with them myself. And then you would start reading from the top card. The one thing I will say is that before, as you as a reader, um, before they hand you back the cards, or after they hand you back the cards, and you are about to proceed with your reading, kind of connect with your higher self, or your angels, or your deity. Uh, just take a moment and ask your deity or your angels, your guides, to give you clarity and to give you a clear reading. And just, I usually say, let me be a channel for your wisdom. That's basically my prayer. Let me be a channel of your wisdom. And I lay out the cards and then I'll start, I'll start talking and I'll start speaking. So the way that we're going to lay them out is the Celtic cross spread. This is the Celtic cross spread. It's probably the most common, most popular. And I know there are probably hundreds of spreads out there. You are more than welcome to go out and, and, and research them and learn them. But I will say that if you have the basic of a Celtic cross spread, the rest will be, uh, be gravy, as they say. The first card is the middle card. This would be the first card. And that's that first card on the deck that we just shuffled and we cut into three and now we put it on top and this is going to be the first card. This will be the first card. And this card represents the actual person. Now, I know a lot of people like to have a querent card, um, or I know there are a lot of books that teach it. I have, actually have never been to a reader that uses a querent card. It seems like authors like to use a querent card, but I've never seen anybody use it. I've never used it, and I've been doing this for almost 30 years, so I, I don't know where that came from. But a queer card uh, is basically an, an image within the, the tarot deck of, uh, and I'm just going to say this in case somebody, some know-it-all wants to ask you, you know, where's my queer card? Just tell them nobody really uses it anymore. But uh, it's basically an image of the person you're reading. Uh, let's say if I'm reading myself, uh, I am a water sign, so I would pick something within the cups. Uh, I would say I'm a middle-aged man, so I would probably use uh, a prince. So maybe the Prince of Cups would be a uh, suitable query for me. Um, you know, and maybe as I get older, I'll pick the King of Cups. But anyway, um, that would be what the query card is. Uh, so a lot of people, have, you'll read about it, but like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't think I've ever, ever had anyone use a query card on me. Anyway, and I've never used them. So the first card represents the person. And now normally the querent card, the, the textbooks are going to tell you the querent card goes underneath this first card. And that first card represents the person, where they're at, how they're feeling. Uh, it just gives you a, a sense of who they are. So it will be the, the, the well, it will be the querent. <laughs> uh, you're not even going to see that, so I don't know why I'm writing that. Uh, this will be the queer. And this card represents, uh, again, that person. So let's say I'm doing a reading for you. I'm going to look at that card. and I'm going to be like, let's say I see uh, the tower card. I'd be like, my goodness, you're going through a lot of changes right now. It looks like uh, you're having a lot of upheaval. You know? So this is kind of like their energy where they're at right now. It's, it, we're going to go, it, the reading progressively goes more and more in depth. But however, you start off with basically your feeling of what the card is telling you or the Tarot's feeling on that particular person, including yourself if you're giving yourself a reading. Now, I usually go um, counterclockwise for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, this is my technique. You can use whatever technique you want. Uh, you read, though, you read this as your second card. Actually, I'm just going to put all the numbers in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this second card to the left of the querent 
is where, what energy they have just left. What has just completed in their life. Um, sometimes, you know, let's say, actually, I'm going to take it for granted that not, most of you don't know the energies and the images of the cards. So I'm not going to go into any particular card. But let's say um, it, it represents uh, the energy of where they've just come from, what, uh, what has just completed for them, uh, things they've gotten out of, whether it be a relationship or a job or, or a rough patch of bad luck or a good patch of good luck or, you know, whatnot. So this card will give you the feeling and the sense of what they're just coming out of. You know, where, where were they uh, from a month to three months ago? And let me just jump in here right now about time. Uh, everybody has their own way of doing it. For me, uh, the, the, the reading itself usually goes in a, a moon cycle to a seasonal cycle. And what I mean by that is it's either, let's say this card represents uh, stuff that happened to them in the last uh, season or in the last month what's been going on with them. And season, I don't mean fashion season, I mean fall, winter, summer, you know. But um, anyway, so again, you know, it, let it talk to you because sometimes I'll do reading and I'll be like, you know what, this looks, feels, this is telling me that this has been going on for a while. So this has been a, going on for a full season probably, you know, from equinox to solstice. So this is the, what's been going on. This is where they're headed. Okay, this is about as close to fortune telling as I like to get, this particular card, number three. And where they're going could be where they're headed into, what's, what's about to pop up in their life. Again, within the next moon cycle. I always like to say within the next moon cycle, it's very possible you're going to run into this. You know, um, it could be, you know, the sun card, my favorite card. The sun card would be uh, you're being celebrated at work or you're being celebrated for, you know, whatever. Or you're, you just happen to have a, 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 a time or, or whatnot where people are just so happy with you and you're doing great and everybody's looking good at you and you're feeling good and, and whatnot. So that would be happening soon, you know, within the next moon cycle. The fourth card represents card number four. And again, I'm saying this, this is my system. Somebody might say that's card number four. So I'm just telling you how I do it. <laughs> card number four is the foundation card. The foundation card represents the platform of which they're jumping off of. Uh, if all else fails, they could be having the crappiest reversed cards with swords and death and the hermit and the tower, but their, their foundation card is the sun their happiness, their celebration of themselves and people celebrating them. So let's say uh, they're having all negative stuff going on up here, but they have a very positive foundation card. That's what they need to fall back on. And that's what you need to tell them they can fall back on. Fall back on the fact that people love you and celebrate you. Fall back on on your your happy-go-lucky energy, demeanor. You know, I'm going back to the sun part. Um, so that is the foundation of what energies are playing in this whole story. And I want to say that this is a story. As you see, it'll keep coming out and it will eventually tell you a story with an end. Okay? And you have to look at this as one big story. Don't look at it and, 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 and micro, micro read it <laughs> per card. You want to read each card. You want to put them all together to make one big picture. So as you're reading each card, try to link it with the next picture, the next image, and whatnot. So this is the foundation card. This card is, uh, I call it, what's going on in their head? Where is your head? Where's your head at? Because where your head's at is where you're creating a lot of stuff. Um, basically, this, this tells them what their thinking patterns are, how they've been thinking, what have they been harping on, what, do they, what haven't they been harping on. Uh, it's basically uh, how are they doing psychologically. Uh, what, what's their, their thought process, their stream, their thought stream? You know, what's going on up here in the head. So it's very, and this is kind of helpful the way that it's set up because here you have the past, you have the future, you have the foundation, and the head. So it's kind of like a person right there. And if you look at it that way, it's pretty easy to remember. Over here, card number six. I'm not even in camera, aren't I? 
Card number six is the, for me, when I use the spread, this card represents how they're approaching this story. Okay, not the question of am I gonna lose my job, not the overview, but this particular story, because by now, by the time you get to card number six, you're gonna start getting a picture of what this person's about, where they're headed, what they've been thinking, what their strengths are, and this is gonna be their whole attitude on that. How are they approaching this? Uh, uh, sadly, a lot of people get readings when there's crisis in their life and they need you know, some kind of support or whatnot. So you'll, you'll be like, okay, well, it looks to me like you're approaching this very negatively or very nonchalantly. Uh, the card will tell you their whole attitude and their approach to this entire story that we're seeing here. Card number seven is the energies around them, whether it be material energies, emotional energies, spiritual energies. It could be anything from the house that they live in to their angel guides and their fairies and elementals that you know fly around them <laughs> in the trans-dimensional universe. So, you know, the influence, the external influences is card number seven. Uh, it, could, it could be co-workers, could be from their home to co-workers to their guardian angels. So you'll have to read that on your own and try to sense what, um, what, what is influencing and how when you get to this particular card. Number eight is um, the thing that they fear and want the most. Yeah. <laughs> How often do they, do we uh, cut ourselves off because the thing that we want the most is what we're scared of the most as well. Uh, a lot of us want to, uh, you know, you'll always hear people talking about, oh, I want to be a multimillionaire with a big company. And I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about the general public. <laughs> You know, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to be a CEO of a big corporation, and da 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 But meanwhile, they're scared to death to do it. In their heart of hearts, they're still scared to death. I know I was scared to death doing what I'm doing. And uh, it took me a long time to get over that fear, and I think that's why I finally connected uh, in, in creating this, uh, this, uh, this for all of us, really. And... Uh, it's very, again, it's a very, very thin line between loving something and fearing something. So this is basically their goals and dreams as well as what they're afraid of. And it'll be a very, it'll give you, again, a clearer picture of the obstacles uh, that, that they're creating for themselves. Um, I guess a good example for this would be, um, oh, let's say we get a money card like a Ten of Pentacles or something. And so it's going to say that they're, that they're, they're going to be uh, monetarily wealthy, but a lot of times they're afraid of that because of all the added responsibility. So that's kind of the philosophy behind that one. The ninth card is the outcome card. Now the outcome card, a lot of people, I know I first started doing this, well, I started reading when I was a child, but um, as I got older to my teens and my early 20s, I used to read card number one and jump right to card number nine. You know, I want to see where I was and where am I, what's the outcome going to be? <coughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, because you have to understand how you got to the outcome. This outcome card is merely, again, it is merely the, how shall we say, the, the end of this particular story. Okay, so if I'm doing this reading and I'm finally getting to this card and I'm about to turn that card, I will say to them, I'll be like, okay, well, this card is going to represent what is going to happen if this keeps happening. If this is flowing and continues to flow the way that it's flowing and the direction that it's going, this is where you're going to end up. So the outcome is not a definite. I, I want to make it very clear. It's not a definite. It's kind of the effect, the effect card of this cause. This is the cause. That will be the effect. Okay, so let me review ever so quickly. Number one, the number one card is the queer card representing the person. Number two represents what the queer has just come out of, their past, their recent past. Uh, the number four card is their foundation and what they have to, you know, to, to gain their strength from, or they are getting their strength from, drawing their strength from, or a good beginning point for them to move ahead. 
The number three card over here in this position is their immediate future, where they're headed, what they're headed into right now. The number five card, the head card, I call it, is where their head is at, what are they thinking, what's their thought process like. Number six is how are they approaching this particular story. Number seven is the energies, the external energies that are influencing their life, whether it be physical, material, emotional, or spiritual. Number eight is how they, what they are afraid of, what their, their hopes and fears, basically. Hopes and fears, the hopes and fears card. And number nine, the, the outcome, if things keep going this way. So that's the Celtic cross. Um, a great way, and now we can probably get into uh, using the blank uh, index cards, is to do readings. And I'm going to give you this exercise. And for those of you, um, as as um, for those of you in the, um, I'm sorry, the personal teacher program for the GIC, I'm going to want you to do this. So uh, start doing it. Get ready. Uh, we're not going to do it. We're, the, the, there won't be any written assignment right now, but it will be in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to give you like two or three weeks to get to know the tarot. Uh, in about a month's time, I'm going to ask you to uh, to tell me your experience on doing the blank index card reading. But anyway, for everybody else, uh, again, once you've gotten your cards, once you've gotten to know them, once you've done the daily meditation on each card and got to know each card, and once you've memorized uh, this simple layout spread, a great way to have the cards talking to you and to really advance yourself uh, psychically. I'm just going to go ahead and start using the word psychic. I know it has a crazy, a crazy undertone to it, but the reality of it is it's, we got to get over that. Uh, psychic is a sense, so it's one of our sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth senses. So I'm going to start using that term a little bit more. Um, it will be developed. <coughs> it'll be to advance your psychic ability. Now, when you get once again, once you've done the uh, the meditation on all the cards, once you've uh, gotten to know the spread, you would get your your matching amount of index blank index and you want no lines on it, and that's I want to be very clear about that. No lines on the front, no lines on the back. You would go ahead and treat them just like a regular deck. Start doing readings on yourself using this spread, but with a blank a blank uh, card, blank index card. And when you're reading that, all you have to do is know, know exactly what, uh, what the, the placement of that card is. Uh, let's say I put a blank card here at foundation, and, uh, and it's blank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to psychically connect with that and say, okay, well, the foundation is, you know, and start trusting my intuition. What am I feeling? What am I sensing right now? Uh, it's a, again, this is a way to really expedite the process of developing your psychic ability uh, and making you a really, really awesome tarot reader. Um, so this is a great practice. Uh, I think I'm going to kind of leave you with that. We have a, covered a lot of information today, my goodness. And um, uh, what I will say is that, oh, I'm sorry. Let's try to take that back. I want to show you how to do a... Um, couple more quick readings. Okay, so that's that. Take the index cards, practice with them, and learn to trust your intuition on the blank cards using that particular placement. Now, for uh, for regular everyday stuff, I normally pick one card a day. Like I said, I haven't picked it up in a month after I redesigned the room. I move them, and I just, you know, you move something aside, you forget to pick it up. Thank goodness for today's class, because now they're going to be uh, in my face again. Uh, on for a daily card, and a daily card is good just to give you an overview. I, I don't want to say it's like astrology or whatnot, but again, it kind of just gives you something to think about, something to meditate on, something to contemplate on, give you an, a feeling of the energy for the day or the energy that you're having for that particular day. And that's the same thing. You shuffle until you can't shuffle anymore, um, and then just pick one card. And just look at that card and read that card, and that will be your card of the day. Now, that's a great... Uh, that's a great thing to get you uh, accustomed to having the tarot in your life and you interacting with them. Uh, so you can do a card of the day. If you need to look it up, go ahead and look it up. 
if you've gotten comfortable enough to where you can just let the card talk to you, and they will start talking to you. I promise you that. If you follow these uh, advices, this advice that I've offered you, uh, you're going to start seeing they talk to you much quicker. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is a yes or no. A lot of people um, have different ways of doing it. Uh, I, I forgot where I learned this technique. Uh, I've had so many teachers in the past. But it's basically a three-card spread. And uh, this, is, this is a great way for me to talk about the reverse versus upright. When you're doing a, a tarot spread, the cards are either going to be very are going to be upright or they're going to be reverse. Upright, what card is this? The Princess of Cups, one of my favorites. This is upright. This is reverse. Of course, it's going to be one of two. When you do a reading, they're going to land one way or the other. Many people see the reverse as the opposite. Uh, many people only read them upright and ignore the reverse. I am very comfortable with um, something a little bit in the middle. When I see a card in reverse, it is the energy of that card, no matter what, but it's a weaker energy of it. For me, when I see the reverse Princess of Cups, it still has the energy of the upright Princess of Cups. But I would probably tell my querent, you're, this is happening, but it's being held back. There's something blocking it. It's, the energy is obviously there, but it's not as strong. So it's kind of a weakened version of that energy if it's reversed. So I hope that helps you with that. Um, however, with a yes or no card, yes or no reading, you think of the question that you want. And it has to be answered yes or no. You can't say, you know, what color should my car be? Yeah, that's not a yes or no question. And the same thing goes for your query if you're doing a reading for somebody else. They have to be very clear of their question. It has to be able to answer yes or no. Uh, same thing, shuffle the cards, have them think of the question. Uh, a lot of times when I do a reading, after I've done the full Celtic spread, I offer them three yes or no's at the end. And uh, that way they just get a little more detail pertaining to the reading that they just had using the entire spread. So a yes or no reading would be taking three cards. Uh, let me just pick the top three here. Okay, so I have the Queen of Wands, upright, the Knight of Wands, reversed, and the Princess of Cups, upright. So being that I have two of the three are upright, my answer to the querent or to myself would be most likely yes. Most likely yes. If you have two upright, one reverse. The reverse card is going to symbolize what can be done to make it a, a very a definite yes. So in this particular one, the Knight of Wands is reversed. So this is what has to be worked on to be able to be put upright. So I would go in and, and you know contemplate the images or whatever, read the Knight of Wands, and for, for me right now, I'd probably say, oh, it's probably uh, a young fire sign that's interfering. You know, you have to win them over or get them on your side, blah, 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 blah. And I can this is just off the top of my head. So that would be a definite maybe, a definite, a possible yes. If it were three down, three reverse, that's an absolute no. That's an absolute no. And if you want to read the cards and explain to them why no, that would tell you. If it's three uprights, absolute yes. Three uprights are an absolute yes. If you want to read the cards and tell them why this is happening, by all means. Now, if you get two down and one up, that's a most likely no. A most likely no, and the one card that's upright is what they have going for them. And you would read that and have them work on that. So anyway, I hope that that helps a little bit with the yes or no's. Uh, I know, again, I know we've covered a lot. I'm not going to give homework for this week, except that I, for our regular students, you know, please go out and buy yourself uh, the blank index cards. If you don't have a, a set of tarot cards already, you can get them very inexpensively uh, off Amazon or anywhere. You can probably go to a bookstore and get them for 10 bucks. But um, anyway, uh, please, you know, get your materials together. Uh, we will probably have one more tarot class in about four weeks. 
I just want to let everybody know that I have um, I have only committed to doing uh, seven more of these. Uh, again, I'm doing this in eight-week modules, and uh, if I ever feel like I don't feel like doing it anymore, I'm not going to do it anymore. But I am uh, committed to doing seven more of these classes. So, but I will say, in about four in about four weeks, we're going to have another uh, tarot class. Um, uh, not a tarot class, a review, and I'm gonna I am gonna ask our students to uh, to uh, to to start doing a little bit more work and a little written work on that. Anyway, thank you guys. I know this was a long one. <laughs> Take a breath, focus on our breath, come back to reality. Uh, what is reality? Anyway, this is Bernard Alvarez. I hope uh, you enjoy the course and are enjoying the course, and that this class has given you a lot to work with and get you started on becoming a, a fantastic uh, tarot reader and uh, an intuitive. Uh, again, let's pass the, uh, the virtual plate, pass the virtual basket. Please go to the GIC.org and click donate and uh, donate a couple dollars. You're getting these classes for free and uh, we would really appreciate it if you could make a small contribution. Thank you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.